Zerg himself as we loaded up into game number one on Oxide. Spawning in the bottom left, leaving very early with a probe once again, is the blue Protoss stats. And in the top right spawning as a red Zerg player playing for Team Alpha X, it is going to be Ragnarok. As you mentioned, qualifying through that round of 36 play in bracket, I believe he... Was it Armani he beat in the final match? Yes. Nice. I I would uh, say maybe the only surprise out of the four players that made out, even though it's not a big surprise, obviously, for Ragnarok to make it through here, but uh, hmm. I think all all of Bian, Dream, and Bunny were kind of... Um, uh, well, I, I would have said they were favored to, to get out, at least in one of the upper or lower bracket, but Ragnarok managing to beat Armani there in a nice CVZ, made it through, now got blocked and went for the hatch first at the third, so very, very standard openers. Yes, very... Very standard openers in the nah. I'd be surprised to see stats switch it up against Ragnarok. As you mentioned, Ragnarok is someone who is aggressive and stats probably is going to respond with defensive play. You know what would so when I say I don't think it's gonna switch up, I mean opener wise, we're gonna be seeing at least one Stargate. What we might see though is sticking to a single Stargate and playing similar to how Trap was playing yesterday. Um, with, for example, double void ray oracle, or maybe even something like triple void ray, just openers that are slight, slightly offbeat that might make Ragnarok believe, hey, he's playing double stargate. Let me walk across the map with nine queens and then walk straight into like twelve gate charge slot or something like that from mm. single stargate. That can be very, very dangerous because a lot of these builds that are aggressive that can kill the double stargate player, they have to be done semi blind. Yes, that 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 can be the case, unless you count the Void Rays at a specific time, and then you can also know that it's mm. to stack Void Ray. I also, personally, if I was Stats' coach, I would never tell him to do one of those three Void Ray openers of one Stargate, because they actually die against pretty much every <laughs> every normal all-in, if you figure it out that it's not two Stargate Phoenix, so... Uh, not two Stargate Void Ray, sorry, so... Whenever you don't wait for ten Queens, necessarily, and then just do one of the more Ragnarok-esque attacks, um, I feel like it's, it's worse against that, so... I mean, I, I wouldn't hate just going to Stargate Void Ray. I'm pretty sure the Koreans tried a lot of all-ins and the Korean Zergs told me that they think nothing works. So if you just want to get into a safe mid-game against a Korean Zerg, I believe it's a fine strategy to do, to go into. Now, he lost the last two games against Stroke, but those were not necessarily all-ins and I don't think you're going to see anything similar from Ragnarok, personally. Mm. Yeah, I don't think so either. Now, Oxide is a map where... That fort base for the Protoss can be a little bit tricky to hold if you do go if you do end up getting there, obviously. Mm. Ooh. Alright. A third gas. Yeah. I have absolutely zero idea what this is going to be. That's a very fast third gas, so perhaps something like double Stargate Phoenix. Where yeah. you get the second Stargate before you get the third base. Could be a possibility here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, or, or even just uh, a second Stargate in general, no matter what, it could even be Oracles, multiple Oracles or multiple Void Rays, but uh, other than that, you don't really need the gas before the third Nexus, and uh, so, so we're definitely expecting some extra tech to go down um, sooner than usual. Usually, obviously, Protoss would be taking the Nexus right now at around four minutes, and yeah. then take the Stargate after, and he seems to be doing it the other way around, so more of a Mana-esque opener, if I, if I might add. Yeah, even though Mana, I think, is more fond of the four gas, right? Yeah. Uh, I, I feel like this is more middle of the road. I don't really mind this, honestly. It seems to be timed out very well. I'm not sure if this was happening last last games around as well, but this would make the build a lot smoother, and it makes it makes sense gas-wise. More continuous uh, void ray production. Two adepts find a lot of damage here, by the way. Three workers already. A couple of links going down as well, and he can get another shade off, most likely into the natural. I I wouldn't mind if he cancels. He is not going to cancel. Instead, he's going to be able to get uh, one more worker. So we have a uh, stasis ward in the main base. Trap is so good with these little attacks and with the the micro at multiple locations. He did, he did a fine job there. Four workers, a massive drone pool away from the... Well, this is the natural, but at the third base location. So, mm -hmm. yeah, overall, I think uh, Stats is pretty happy with that opener. Yeah, decent style from Stats. I, I like especially... I, I don't think he actually played the opener just like this in the last games. So I, I will double check just to make sure before Twitch chat calls me out again. But I think it's a very nice 
um, adjustment against a player like Ragnarok because this just makes you so much safer against things like a taxi or maybe an early Nidus, something like that. And he's also going for the Robo, so once again, most likely heading into a Robo Bay, which also once again is safer against all the massive Queen Marches. Yeah, and also makes it a little easier to even defend things like Hydra Bane at times. If you get one or two good disruptor shots on the Hydras, then your Void Rays can kind of carry the rest. So I'm not surprised to see continued Void Ray production here. Yeah, yeah, this is, we see stats completely adapting to the player he's playing against. Instead of going for quicker tech, uh, we saw him go up to four Void Rays and then tech against Rogue, I think at least in the first game. Mm -hmm. uh, and in the second game also, not that high of a Void Ray count initially, but here way higher Void Ray count. This allows him a couple of things. First of all, it forces out it basically tells Ragnarok, hey, if you move across the map too quickly with queens, you're just going to straight up die, okay? My Void Rays with a Super Battery will destroy you. You'll need to wait till you either have Hydras or a lot of queens. On top of that, what it can do, it can counterattack very effectively into the Zerg once the queens start marching, which is one of the most powerful things you can do against a lot of these queen marches as well. I think, by the way, we're seeing a build that we don't see a lot in Europe. European Zergs, whenever they go into Hydra, they like to add a Baneling Nest, but this could very well just be Hydra, Ling, Queen. And I think I've seen Ragnarok do this a couple of times before. Very interesting. I would think that this was would also be really bad against the Robo Bay, but I believe since stats didn't see any move out, hold that thought as a lot of Hydra spawn right next to the Void Ray, so it gets a little bit of HP damage done. But I think because of it, he didn't go into the Robo Bay and now is just going for the standard Templar Archives. And I was going to say that I think you just forgot the Bailing Nest, uh, because if you go for that oh. attack that you were talking about, you need an earlier layer. Otherwise, this can't work. Like, okay. this is already too late, I think. Yeah. So instead, you think he might have forgotten the Bailing Nest? I mean, we're not going to see a push anymore now, are we? No, no, no. I actually... <laughs> I, I remember a series between Ragnarok and Max Pax, and I reference the series a lot when I'm streaming. Uh, whenever I mess something up in the early game and I go for a super late Hydra Bane timing, I call it the Ragnarok because he always waits for both of his Hydra upgrades, and he hits the latest Hydra Bane attacks that I have ever seen any Zerg pro player do, and he still makes them work somehow, so... Uh, th that's the Ragnarok in PvZ. I actually still do believe he's going to go for that attack, even though it's going to hit at like 8.30 or something ridiculous where carriers might already be out. Look at this game sense of Ragnarok, just knowing there was going to be a prism there. He's actually surrounding it on two sides. He didn't see it, right? Yeah, I'm, I, I'm not sure. With the way he moved, it looked like he did, but yeah. uh, I, I did not pay close enough attention to see if there was a Zergling that spotted it. I really don't think so. Um, but yeah, his attack is gonna hit super, super light. Usually, you can hit Hydra Bane times already before 8 minutes, even with 80 drones. And Ragnarok is just gonna wait for all of his upgrades to finish up, which then allows the Protoss to get up more Storms and more Cannons uh, to hold this, and more Archons, more, most importantly. So, 8 Dropper Lords? This is new Lambo. This is now uh, a completely unique game. <laughs> 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 nice, some chest ram presence as well. Yeah, I mean, if the wide rays are in position for this, this will get shut down. If they're not, I'm very afraid what will happen if Stats just recalls and then has his storms there and the wide rays to intercept the... There's no recall on the main, though. There's no recall oh, on the main. Oh, actually used the macro. Oh, wow. Yeah, he's, he's been chrono boosting like a madman. We see a fake push here at the third base. Prism is heading towards the main, so a lot of things are going to be happening at the same time. Four salads will make their way into the natural of stats as, or of the natural of Ragnarok as well. The drops will hit soon. Oh, yo, yo, stats, you might be in a little bit of trouble. Ragnarok doesn't have any reinforcements to clear these salads, though. He was completely maxed. That's another disadvantage of hitting so late. There's no more reinforcements to clear up run by moves back with his entire army. Meanwhile, the drop in the main is with the, the five. Uh, the bonus queens as well take out the fleet week at least 13 drones fall but so do seven workers on the side of stats 178 supply against 153 um the, the main base of stat i mean stats i mean he can't here. leave here right I, I the problem of ragnarok is that he can just doesn't have an escape now for some reason there are no high templars here with his army so Maybe the Hydra Queen can trade off decently against the Warriors. I would have loved to see him bring a couple of High Templars with it to clean this up a little bit nicer. I actually don't think it's that bad for his stats to lose the main base as long as he gets those units with the Void Race, which I think he will. 
Yeah, I don't mind that he left the, the, the Templar. I completely understand that. Perhaps a split, but a lot of things were happening, so we can, of course, understand why that wasn't quite the case. Yeah, he's just hold with these Templars. He's holding this base for now, making sure that no Baneling Rambais can come in. Archons were at the fort as well. These Overlords in the main have completely disappeared. He managed to keep the Prism alive as well. Stats is uh, on top of his things today. His unit control has been great so far this game. Absolutely. I think Ragnarok needs to kill him right now before the Templar Archives finishes, because if you look at the bank of stats, <laughs> If he spends it on icons, there is no way that Ragnarok is ever going to win a fight in the next three to five minutes, honestly. So, uh, ob obviously, Ragnarok knows that he killed that Templar Archives, might not know how far away it really was from finishing. And now he's trying to regroup all his units and he's going to try, I guess, to run into the third base. Uh, but I think it's looking very good for stats. Yeah, it is looking extremely good for stats right now. Warps in a couple of zealots there with the prism. Uh, stats, stats thinking of moving out. Now, I'm not the greatest fan of that as you're floating 2k gas currently. That is... Uh, oh, oh, these hydras. Hydras find the prism. This is a big deal, actually. If he gets that prism, that's nice. At least there won't be any counterattack potential he needs to worry about. Immediately takes the hydras. I think Ragnarok knows. I mean, he's not building any extra drones, right? He's still on six gas. There's no infestation pit. He's morphing in 14 more banelings. He has a decent army. He has fine upgrades on the Hydras. And there isn't no, there's no storm? Where did the, oh, all Templars with storm are on the right. Yeah, he just now warped in the High Templars because he warped in extra Zealots as well. And he's starting two carriers. It's now or never for Ragnarok. And this is the true Ragnarok timing. At almost 12 minutes, he comes in here and he's going to try to bust stats. Let's see what happens. Yeah, good baneling split so far. Coming out of Ragnarok, ensuring that Storms can't hit 50 banelings at the same time, but sending them in four at a time. The super battery is absolutely buzzing away, healing these Void Rays. Baneling is about to connect, actually, with a lot of Templar. There's still one or two Storms. Archons now are being morphed, and I think a big zealot of... Uh, a big warping of zealots here could make the difference as there's a couple of uh, bane links still in the back ragnarok needs to keep them for the next warp in links are flooding in hydras are trading a little bit too well lambo good storm there by stats who managed to find another templar hidden probably at the third base uh, making sure that no run buys could happen and i think stats might have just done it as plus one air starts during the fight plus three started during the fight for, for me, it, at, at a certain point, I was a little bit afraid. But I think if you start plus three while you're being uh, 67 Rondal in, you might be a little bit too confident, Lambo, as uh, stats takes game number one here on Oxide after a, uh, a remarkable defense, may I add. I think the initial uh, defense that he did, the, the way he split his units, not even necessary. it wasn't even necessary what he did, but the way he split his army was completely prepared at the fourth, he was prepared at the third, and he said, okay, you can take out my main base, but as long as I keep a good probe count, and I'm killing workers on the other side of the map, if I don't lose my Templar and Archons, I will be fine, and I really, really did like that. That control was fantastic, the army split was fantastic, he was prepared everywhere, and I think in this situation you were right, if he splits off one or two Templar towards the main, he cleans that up faster, that initial trade goes a little bit better, but otherwise an almost flawless game from the Korean Protoss. Yeah, I also have to say that I have never seen that, and I would love to give that a name as well. Maybe the K Korean limousine or something where he puts uh, hydras and queens. <laughs> but it's, it, it seems super counterintuitive to drop against Void Race because you know you're never going to get back out there, right? Yeah. It seems like a way more committed Nidus. Like, if he just does this with a Nidus and a Nidus doesn't get spotted, then maybe I'm a little bit more of a fan of it. But, uh, like, uh, th that was a crazy strategy by Ragnarok. I mean, he even caught stats off guard, right? But uh, stats with a good crisis management may manage to still defend against it. Yeah, even if he has like a Nidus behind it, not even necessarily to uh, to, to kind of have as the initial push out, but just with the drop, right? So at least there's an escape because he did a good job. He traded kind of well into the main base and he took out the fleet beacon, took out at least like seven, eight workers, got a base. So it's like, yeah, it's nice. If you can then Nidus back down or just go back home wherever you want to go you at least have you keep your five six queens alive it was like i think legit like 15 hydras that he lost as well like that's a mm -hmm. it's, it's kind of a big deal honestly hydras are expensive yeah. man I, I mean at that point we're also talking though about the, the, the timing already because he makes so many overlords it's so late yeah. like even anitis i don't really like anitis in general but maybe it's a better option as you said maybe if you want to just trade as well if he does this of a higher drone count i'm thinking could be fine but he had to kill his opponent there, especially due to the run by as well. But he only yeah. was on six gas. He didn't have a transition. Whenever carriers actually hit the field, uh, your army just falls off super hard, especially 
maybe not the first two carriers, but already those first two carriers are basically flying zealots. They, they, they're kind of flying zealots that the Bainings can't deal with, so the Hydras uh, shoot a lot at those interceptors. And then once they are four out, Hydra Bane really, really falls off hard. So. Yeah, exactly. And, and the thing is with six gas, as you mentioned, is that Corruptors are so far away at that point, right? Like, yeah. like minutes, actually minutes away, like there will be a plus two timing on air that stats will be able to execute with somewhere between six and, 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 and nine carriers probably. Might even have a mothership with it and there's going to be like two Viper, Hydra. I think you actually need to go Lurker afterwards then. I don't even, like there, there's no option to, to, to do anything else, right? You just have to hope to go to get into Lurker and get enough spores up and and pray, pray that you somehow manage to survive and that Banelings perhaps do a lot of damage. But um, we forgot something important. Well, I forgot something important. It's in the bottom left. We have the blue Protoss player who's up 1-0. It's of course going to be Stats. Playing for Africa Freaks. And his opponent in the top right playing for Alpha X. The aggressive Zerg player Ragnarok. Aggressive he has been so far. Indeed, uh, hitting those l later timings with higher supply uh, didn't quite work out the last game. I'm curious to see what he has on Pillars of Gold. Um, f feels like a map where we, we could be seeing something similar, like Hydra Hydra Bane based. I, I I think I prefer Hydra Bane on a map like this than on Oxide personally. Uh, if I were a Zerg player, so I preferred less if I was a Protoss player, which is what I am. So it would have made more sense to mention that initially. Yep. No, I definitely agree with you. Pillars is a super open map. Even if you want to attack into a three base Protoss, you can have a pretty big concave, but especially attacking into the fourth. Once these rocks are down, you can come in from pretty much more than 180. So it's, uh, yeah, you can even come from behind from in between the bases with a bunch of banelings. So it's super, super easy to split up your banelings and then the storms will always hit much less. Whereas on Oxide, as we saw with the attack, he kind of just came in from two narrow paths, and even though he split them very well, I thought Ragnarok had quite decent control with that uh, mm. with the army that he had. But um, if he micros the same on this map, maybe that uh, type of fight will go a lot better for him. Yeah, that, that final fight perhaps does go his way. Um, I, I'm curious to see if we're once again going to see such a late timing, or if Ragnarok wants to try to finish it a bit earlier. We are fully expecting uh, no hive this game, though, right? Uh, <laughs> I would be very surprised, yes. Yeah. It's it's not uh, how Ragnarok likes to play. It's not how he rolls in this matchup, at least. I know that in CVT, he, he doesn't mind playing the late game as much, right? Or is he also more mid-game focused still? No, I, I, I think in TVZ in general, you can't be very mid-game focused. As a Zerg, you kind of just play defensive. But then he also is a very aggressive player, very strong with Mutas. I think in general, he's the best in CVT uh, because he's a very mechanical player. He has very clean mechanics. And you don't really need to rely too much on the strategic part. In TBZ, it's mostly just playing clean uh, early game and then having good mechanics and mid game. So, mm. um, yeah. I actually was a little bit surprised last game by Stats, who went Robo first and then just didn't use it into Disruptors. Um, do, what do you think you would need to see to actually throw down that Robo Bay? Because it has to be for a potential defensive Robo Bay, right? Yeah, I, th I think it's uh, just. Maybe if he sees a Roach Barn. Uh, he's very active, by the way. He's one of those guys that uh, activates his... So, I forgot the name. The Pulsar Beam once. Throws down one Stasis Ward. And all the other energy goes straight into Revelations on different hatcheries. So his knowledge of what his opponent is doing tends to be quite good. Now, in the series against Rogue, he lost the Oracle. So that wasn't quite the case. But... Um, so, so far, he's been very, very active with those revelations and ensuring that he can figure out, hey, what's coming up? So I think he likes to play reactive. He doesn't want to just blindly go into a robo bay as um, it can be a little painful if the opponent actually does build more than 80 drones when you have a robo bay. It's like, well, crap, my fourth base is going to be delayed. Uh, it's, it's not the greatest, uh, not the greatest feeling. I can assure you that. We see Stargate uh, pretty quickly again. No third gas this time. I'm... I'm really curious about that, that build order and why he feels that's the way to play if you go for Robo. I guess slightly faster Robo, you have a little bit more gas, continuous uh, Void Ray production. Maybe we'll just see straight Forge Twilight here. Yeah, I think it might have also been map dependent because Oxide is much shorter than Pillars. So mm. more likely that there's a Queen Block, right? 
Oh, good, good focus fire here. Gets three drones, a zergling and a drone pull. I think that's okay. You're okay with that as a Protoss. And at the same time, again, he's gonna try to kill some drones in the main base, which he gets actually three. Cool, but that was almost. I, feel, I felt like if Ragnarok micro that better, he could have yeah. gotten the last shot. Yeah, yeah. Definitely could have. I think so too. That was uh, very dead. Good start though for uh, stats. It's very funny, very often as a toss, when you watch these oracles do damage, you always tell yourself, well, this never happens in my games. You know, it's like the guys that I play against just defend way better. But you'll see that stats against everyone that you'll be playing against. Yes, even you guys in Diamond, if he would be playing against the Diamond Zerg you guys play, you he would also be getting a lot of drone kills with that single oracle. Like, his control is just actually insane. Him and Zest actually have the best oracle control. Mm -hmm. Yeah, agreed. As uh, we do see the Forge and Twilight follow up before the Robo, and yep. again Ragnarok, this time going for an earlier Baning Nest. Mm -hmm. Last game he completely skipped Baning Nest and Roachhorn. This Baning Nest is also not safe for a potential Graves, uh, which which can already be the mix up between the two Stargate Voyager, right? If you feel like your opponent is getting a little bit too greedy, you can mix in that Graves, but stats, obviously, no reason to mix it up since. You should feel pretty confident. I fully expect Ragnar to go for the Hydra Bane timing again, which surprises me a lot. Because uh, Trap actually had an interview where he said he thinks it's out of the meta, the Hydra Bane timing against the two Stargate Voyager, but apparently Ragnarok doesn't seem to agree. Ragnarok has his own meta. He doesn't give a crap what Trap says in interviews. <laughs> As, uh, he just <laughs> seems to be going into that Hydra Bane. Do we have an uh, Evo on the map? No Evo, so this, will, this is going to be uh, rather dedicated. Usually, even with the... The, the seventh. Oh, whoop, whoop. Mm, so he's gonna just have a little bit of Hydra, probably a fake move out with Hydra Ling, maybe even Queen. And then he's gonna try to surprise his opponent with Mutas. Now, I'm not the biggest fan of this personally, but um, if the Protoss does not recognize the difference of Hydra counts, which is sometimes hard uh, as a Protoss player, right? Then mm. this can work. However, I think Stats might be just not going for a storm this game, in which case that would be not good for him. Not good for not good for who? Desert player, because I think you yeah. you're forced to make extra units and you can't even make the mutas. Okay, he does get storm now. So yeah. what Lambo's talking about is the moment that uh, Toss decides to skip Storm. It, mo it most of the time it means he's gonna move out with Zealot Archon, and in that case, as a Zerg, you're forced to build more gas units, and thus having a lower mute account. This build is kind of reliant. Oh my God! Why is he showing with the overshare that's relevated? <laughs> the, the gas? No. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's a, a huge mistake. error. That is a massive mistake. Uh, Yes, yeah, Stats did not pick up on it yet, so maybe he <laughs> didn't expect it either, but eventually you should see it on the mini-map. Uh... Yeah. What a huge error by Ragnarok. They're showing that there's seven gas. This is... Stats should be checking right now. Hey, what's coming out of those eggs? It's the most important thing. This this drop is going to figure out. There's blind cannons in the main, by the way, and in the natural, so Stats is already kind of well prepared for it, but ooh, that is an, that is a, an uncommon error from Ragnarok, who's very strong mechanically. Yeah, I, I even would have cancelled the Mutas in the main, honestly. Yeah. I, uh, he even now shows the Mutas, and Stats is still continuing with the Mortal production. He seems no to just... No Phoenix! Yeah, you, maybe he still didn't see it? Okay, no, he's making extra static defense in the main base. I do believe that six Voyagers are plenty to deal with these Mutas, but he needs to at least be in position with them. Yeah. Oh, he's actually just going straight into Fleet Beacons. Again, no, no straight up plus one, uh, which is a little bit surprising to me. Yeah, uh, it's the most common thing to do, if, especially because it's not even a bad upgrade for Void Rays, right? You already have, what, six Void Rays? Yeah, mm -hmm. should be fine. Um, oh, the Oracle. Oh, there goes the Oracle. Final uh, revelation you'll be seeing from the, the Great Beyond, uh, what these Mutas are up to. And, uh, of course, with the Kala straight messaging it to his Protoss brothers. Look at that lore knowledge here, Lambo. We've got Oof. it all on the sea stream. We also have a Fleet Beacon going down. Plus one on the way, and we have a fake Hydra Bane timing into a real. Uh, into Mutas into a real Hydra Bane timing. And now, generally, if you invest this much money into something and they kill a single Oracle, that is not quite what you want. Yeah. However, 
Uh, there's also a lot of static defense that Stats invested into, into his other bases, and he might be out of position with parts of his army, which is exactly what's happening. On top of that, he already made 7 Phoenix and the Phoenix range. Yeah. So so Stats actually invested even more than, uh, than Ragnarok did. Now Ragnarok's upgrades finished so late that I feel like he needs to wait for a Hydra uh, speed at the very least, otherwise it's super hard to micro. If he would just run in right now, with both speed upgrades done, I feel like St Stats would be in some trouble, but now... Uh, he obviously realizes what's going on. He sees that the rocks are down. He still starts the carriers, um, which is very confident. And now he tries to he tries to kite back with the storm. Tries to eliminate as many bindings outside of the cannon range as possible, which is really important. Burns the overcharge. I hope the phoenix they, they should lift up the hydras on the right side. I feel like, but they go towards yeah, the mutas instead. Go, yeah, go towards the mutas. I thought there was plenty of uh, static on that third base, but yeah, I don't think stats is in too much trouble. The the bane micro not as great as on the previous map, but also stats' army just way bigger. Managed to squeeze out six seven zealots as well to the other side. This is a looking bad right now for Ragnarok. Ragnarok, who is uh, still on layer attack, his opponent is building carriers, adding two stargates while pushing across the map. This is the confidence that uh, Stats currently has in his position, and he has it for a good reason. This Muras should be useless. There's seven Phoenixes with plus one and any Pulse Crystals. Ragnarok, a great.